Yeah. <laughs> Ironically, Checkmate's uh, nickname last season was Ham. Was he? No, but he played like that. Yeah. What you just said about the Florida backline, you could say about their entire roster, though. Mm. Hypothetically. Mm. Welcome to 2022 team previews. Next up for North America is going to be the Florida Mayhem. Flow Rider Mayhem. A team that is entirely different from their previous iteration, minus one returning player in checkmate. Brand new coaching staff. Brand new direction for the team. It is a full sale, almost full sale, franchise rebrand, rebrand in the sense of like who the players are and the team is not so much the actual brand itself, but like a, a redo, a reset button on this team. So Checkmate gets to come back in as properly a DPS player, not someone just covering for OG. They add Hydron from AT, Mira comes over from Glads, mm. someone, Adam, Animo, Majed, uh, Adam's been kind of on his way to the league for a while, but was denied when Valiant had their whole thing going on. And um, Animo rounding out as the veteran play on this team as well. A player that I think was quite surprising for a lot of people. Um, a Jed, someone they felt like was going to be one of the better Western pickups available from the flex support. In some ways, Florida Mayhem does look a lot like Atlanta Rain from mm -hmm. a goal perspective for the team in terms of trying to build a Western roster. Now, they couldn't collect all the best Western pieces that they wanted. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they, I think they were definitely going to be going for to players like OG Ultraviolet, for example, mm -hmm. but just can't secure everybody. True. They might have gone for, maybe they went for Reiner and he decided to go for Glads, understandable. I don't know. They, they probably went for a large number of the AT players and they only got Hydron. That's still pretty good. And then they just kind of built up a more of a mixed roster around it. Um, probably describe this as a bit of a Moneyball team. When you get Gumba on board and he's your head coach, he deploys the Gumba vision. Mm. And a person that is super well known for his scouting ability for finding high value players that are overlooked by other teams. So literally a money ball kind of approach to roster building. And he's been super successful with this approach in all, pretty much every single iter roster that he's been a part of the roster building process. So across all of Immortal Valorant, this is the guy that discovered and gave a shot to Asuna, uh, as well as a number of really high profile or just like good Valorant players. Um, he got some really good results off of team rosters that were probably a fraction of what big rosters in Valorant cost, you know, when you look at the Sentinels and the Envies and stuff like that. So he comes over now, brings his roster building expertise, grabs longtime, you know, associate um, in McGravy, where mm -hmm. McGravy's been out of pro play for a while that has had a lot of interest in coaching. They've obviously worked together very... He's actually been on Florida before, funny enough, way in the past. Um, sure. Knows Gumba's system well. And uh, they bring in day one as well from Team CC, which is also where someone comes from, tank player. So, yeah, th this is a, a whole new look for the Florida Mayhem. Hoping to do a lot with a roster that is probably quite a bit cheaper than a lot of other rosters, which would give them a huge amount of value, but it's definitely a very different look to how they were last year. Uh, start with Hydron Checkmate Mirror before we talk about the whole roster. I quite like this DPS trio. Um, I value Mirror's role um, as kind of the funny hero specialist, um, as somebody who can kind of off-roll if need be uh, for God knows whatever reason. Um, quite highly um, stepping into a new game. I think that is a premium as it stands. Um, I agree with Avril. I don't think we really saw checkmates potential. And if we're resetting our internal clocks and saying, OK, if this is his rookie season, I would probably expect some decent things. And Hydron uh, was highly spoken about um, yeah, amongst like next to almost next to or above Aspire. Like if you thought Aspire had a good season last year, well, Hydron is Maybe not even the next best thing, but, you know, I guess kind of in the same way, the next best thing. Um, but maybe even improving on that kind of benchmark. Um, I quite like it. I think it's probably their strongest, like, 
out of the three, I would say their DPS is probably the strongest line, personally. For, for, uh, out of the other positions on the team, you mean? Yes. Yes. Jessica? Um, I feel like the thing is, the problem really this team has is that everyone is now super stacked in that position as well. I guess we've <laughs> just realized comparing like Boston. Um, yeah, I, I think like they are, there's probably reason to believe that Checkmate was underrated. I'm not sure too much, too sure about Hydron. Um, I think Mira, as, as you outlined, is like a really serviceable player that has like a p couple of ace picks. At the same time, I'm like, does this hold up against the rest of the league? Like, is the quality high enough even to compete? Like, if, if I'm stacking this these guys up against Boston, I'm not sure I'm getting out ahead. I think that's that's probably a DPS and slightly weaker on paper. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's it's hard to say. Definitely in a comparison of the... If it's a tracer meta, for sure. I mean, striker should be running circles around these guys. But outside of that, I mean, it's hard. Maybe it's hard to say. Um, but, I mean, that even being said, I mean, Hydron's tracers. I mean, oh, then it is against striker's tracer. That would be a bit rough. Uh, this is a very stable DPS line in terms of covering all your bases. You got everything you need. You, you know, hit scan player, your flex projectile player, and then Mirror, who comes in, is probably, I think, the league's best quote unquote third DPS in terms. Mm. He's got such a unique hero pool that is a bit of a double edged sword in terms of his own playing time. Like, true. He's not someone you want to run comfortably in most metas, but in very specific metas where his heroes are good, you, you, you're running this guy for sure. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's like a specialist specialist. Yes. <laughs> he specializes in being a specialist almost, as weird as that sounds. Uh, so. I see Mirror doing more for Mayhem than I see for, for the guys like Who Are You on Dragons, for example. Oh, agreed. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, yep. I mean, the, only, the only way... Well, actually, I, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be straight about that. I think a better third DPS would probably be someone like Stalker, but then you're just, you know, that... <laughs> I mean, at that point, you're talk, we're talking about like players that are just insane. Yeah. yeah. Not to say Mirror is not insane. I mean, he's a good player, but, you know, at that point, you're like, well, you know, I might as well just have proper be your third DPS. I mean, fuck it. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit unfair of a comparison. Um, but we actually something I brought up even last year when they announced Mirror, I was like, this is a pretty smart pickup for Mayhem because not only does Mirror just cover really fringe picks on your DPS line, but he covers some tanks as well. So he can like really, really yes. hardcore multi-flex into a bunch of different positions, including off-rolling, which is really high value. So I think Mirror is a super high value pickup, especially for a team like Mayhem, but for a lot of teams that wanted a Western player that has the capability of flexing a lot of different places. Because imagine you are an Outlaws type team and you only have Piggy. Or maybe Vancouver who only has False. Someone like Mirror has a lot of value on that team when you only have one one tank. Or hypothetically, if Mirror was Korean and he joined the, the New York Excelsior, that third DPS makes a lot of sense because he's got some heroes that would actually complement someone like Kellen, right? So um, yeah. his team has already got two tanks, but if he joined a team with only one tank, I mean, that would be one of the highest value DPSs possible that you could absolutely get. So, uh, Checkmate, hella underrated. Most fans just don't even know about his DPS capabilities. They, they just think he's funny, Ryan tank man who replaced OG for a little bit when OG went on his mental yeah. vacation. Um, and they just have no idea how good Checkmate is as a DPS player, which is maybe not their fault, but at the same time means that you get some weird takes in the community where they just hella underrate him. I've seen what Checkmate can do in DPS. He was on a very successful punch above their weight kind of team in Contender's career. Um, and cl clearly one of the better players. Well, I actually expected him to come in last year and play a lot, but you, when you play with Yaki on your team, you're probably going to get benched with Yaki. It's understandable. I mean, we didn't really get to see a good showing from him. Um, I would expect some big things. I'd probably expect him to start. I think um, it's pretty safe to now, say yeah, that Checkmate no. Hydron are going to be like the the starters with Mirror um, echoing what you said. Um, 
possibly doing some role swapping and being a little bit uh, fluid. So, yeah, uh, DPS sounds good. I like it. Yes, are you happy? You good? Yeah, yeah, I'll find on the on the cool. DPS thing. Okay, cool. Let's go towards the tank. Someone and Adam. So this is a really interesting tank line. Double rookies. A yeah. lot of uh, maybe question marks in terms of unknown quantity on this kind of line. Um, Adam played briefly for Uprising Academy on dark mode as well. Uh, and Ground Zero in Australia, which you know most people probably wouldn't have seen his gameplay from there. Um, I'll just put it bluntly, he absolutely dominated, as he should. And then you have Summon, who played in Team CC. And I think previously that he was on Gen G as well. I remember casting him on Gen G, yeah. So, he's a very young player in Gen G. And actually, he's not even 18. He doesn't turn 18 until April 24th. So, he's about to be 18, but just in time for the season. And previously, had we already started the season, which, I mean, if we were a normal eSport, we damn well should have started the season already. He would have not been eligible, but he is eligible now because we start so late. And he was part of the CC squad for a full year last year. Two seasons. Um, first season, reasonable. Second season, not great. Not very good at all. Hmm. Um, and I think that soured my opinion on someone a little bit just because CC as a, as a, as a combined unit wasn't super good in season two of last year. CC really fell off hard. So it's like, this is the same thing that kind of sours my opinion of aim God a little bit. So CC in general doesn't, you know, when you, when you have a rookie coming from that team, as opposed to other teams like O2 blast, which is the obvious one. And then maybe even like a talent, like talent O2 blast, you feel great if they come from there. Any other team is starting to be like, mm, maybe less. So I know that uh, the players regard him well. I know that people that have played against him and with him, regard him as, as, as a pretty good player. And I think now, maybe in a different system, he, he can flourish. Because I'll also say, CC had, ever since No Hill got removed from that team or whatever that, that process was, uh, CC kind of slid down. So maybe you, he needs to be on a team where he can be guided and have a coaching staff that will push into his potential. Uh, and then... He could be a, a real diamond in the rough kind of player. I mean, this entire team, I think, is kind of like that. This is the real, like, legitimate punch above your weight type of team. Yes. Because you don't expect them to be on the same weight class as anybody else. They come in as the featherweight in, in you know, in a league with a lot of heavyweights, and they kind of have to go for some nut shots or something. I mean, let's be honest. Like, by all rights, this team should be, like, in the Spitfire, in the uh, Vancouver, in the Paris tier. But they're probably the most likely to have like a breakout season mm -hmm. out of the, all of those mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yep, I have the highest ceiling. They have the highest potential to break out of that tier and upset. Mm -hmm. And and you know this this goes past. I know we're talking about coaches, but I think um, the system that Gunba brings also uh, attributes to that, or you know helps to catalyze oh, that, sure. that punch above your weight kind of mentality, right? Mm -hmm. Um. However, I, I, I defer all assumptions around Adam to Avril. I would trust and agree yeah. and echo a lot of those things there. The one thing that I will say about someone, um, somebody who I would also yeah. well regard, um, spoke to me uh, about his play in particular and had two things to say. His leadership was quite good and his English was actually phenomenal. Um, so it, comparing that to, you know, having a pedigree to be able to be signed to Gen G and team CC, the mechanics, you know, that that's already an obvious, um, it was, it was a surprising name to be voted so highly when coming from, uh, NA or yeah. just contenders in general. So definitely somebody else to be on the lookout. For. I mean, this is, this could be one of like, when we talk about overlooked players, this could be like literal definition. Cause yeah. I don't know if any other team would have been interested in him at all. Mm -hmm. He would Possibly. have been like one of the most overlooked players if he actually pans out right. By the way, how funny was it that you, the way you structured that sentence of talk about mm -hmm. him is like, yeah, somebody said something somewhere about someone. Right. I, I don't know. It's all just vague. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Feel bad for anybody having to cast uh, the Florida man. <laughs> it's fucking, and it won't be me. Thank you very much. Thank God. Um, I, I, listen, I already had to deal with, I dealt with that shit for two years in contenders already. I'm, sure. Uh, please, yeah. please no. Somebody else can have that pain. Um, 
Just call him S1. I don't know. I have no idea. He needs to change that name. It is, it is gross. The team, by the way, they don't even... They, obviously, they call him by his real name, mm. which... Get ready for this. His real name is Ham. H-A-M. Ham. <laughs> nice. It's a main tank player called Ham. I hope he goes to Ham. Possibly. Bro, your main tank is Ham. I'm like, yeah, he is. Really? Legitimately is. I <laughs> Ironically, Checkmate's uh, nickname last season was Ham. Was he? No, but he played like that. Oh, right. But he played like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get it now. Yeah, interesting. Was... Good stuff. So, um, I don't know. I don't. Strangely, I'm like probably the the first person to talk to about Adam. I don't have a lot to add about Adam because mm. what can I say? Yeah, he dominated Australia like he should. Cool. True. Like he was individually the most impressive player in Australia, but that's just a given, right? You know, like yeah, yeah it's just that's just I'm stating the obvious. So really, it's a, but then you talk about what he did in NA, but then he was on high ping, and it's like eh, this mm. and that. That's just, and then, you know, he was playing an Uprising Academy, but then they went full Korean, so unlucky. Gets cut because he's not Korean, you know. What do you do? He's playing on Dark Mode, but Dark Mode's like yeah. an alright team. Uh, he does have a connection to McGravy through Dark Mode, because McGravy was coaching Dark Mode. True. There's true. a connection there. I think this is one of those, because let's really think about it. Were, were there other tier 2 off tanks that could have gotten that are just clearly better that they should have gotten? that would have potentially been in their price range. I mean, Kaluge was available, but I think some teams, maybe Florida wanted to dodge that bullet a little bit. Yeah. And also, I think, Kalu I was going to say maybe Kaluge too expensive, but I think Kaluge would just take any any deal because like he's, his likelihood of getting on the team pre-shock was just like zilch. So I'm sure he would have taken a 50 grand deal if he well, it that, that like was available. feels like a false move, maybe? False? Like in that tier of player. Like I feel like it probably has to be Western or Korean player that has a visa and has experience like on a mixed roster. I feel like um, Florida want to go as, as Western as possible though. Yes, I agree. I think they I, reluctantly I they reluctantly went three three Korean. Mm -hmm. When they probably didn't really when they you know, let's just listen to what Albert was saying early on yep. about the direction Florida was gonna go in. You know, sound like it was gonna be either a full Western or a predominantly Western team. Mm -hmm. Probably like a that's why I said that they look like a mini rain in, in that regard, in the sense Great. of like the direction of the team. But yep. rain is like, we're going to go full Western plus Venom. And Flora is like, I guess we're doing 50 50. Um, I don't know. I can't, I, it's, it's a shame that I can't say more about Adam because I just haven't, you know, there's not more I can add other than he dominated Australia, got a bit unlucky in NA. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What happened to Gabushi, by the way? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sent to the shadow just, realm. I don't know. It just doesn't. It just doesn't fit like the. And again, like this is some big attributions like we're prescribing to this team. Um, but again, if you read between the lines, it does feel like they want to go fully Western. The only like odd player that they've signed, not to completely jump ahead, is Anamo. Someone again, you kind of have to trust me on this. Like, apparently has quite good English and like is a good leadership figure. Like that feels like a a nuanced take, right? You had checkmate from last year. Okay, like, okay, we hand wave that away. The only uh, weird, like, non-Western player, big quotations on that audio listeners, uh, is Onimo. If you go full, you know, more outside of that, that's where it just doesn't feel like Yibble like, um, would really fit. It feels like we're we're sticking in NA. We're sticking Western at the very least. Going back to Gable Sheet a little bit, it does feel like he got just reading between the lines as well. Like the, his, mm. the interest in Gable, she went from like reasonably high to now like zero for some reason. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. That's why I'm like, yeah, did he get sent to the shadow realm? Like what's going on? Is he <clears throat> battling Pegasus in there? What's going on? Um, mm. I, I don't, I don't know. He's just, he's just, he's just gone. And it's just like teams. He played for Boston for a little bit. Then Boston are like, no, actually, t actually punks better. Mm. Actually was better. And then, and after that, just never saw him again. GBS, Mr. Penis Fish, just just simply gone. So yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know on that one. And I, and to Joe's point as well, I don't know that they would have gone for a Korean off tank. Uh, to, although to be really honest, if you want to moneyball a team properly, the best way to moneyball a team is actually just to load up with a bunch of fresh Korean rookies that other people have overlooked. That's a that's a that's a winning strategy for moneyballing a team if you want to go yeah. that, that that direction. So. 
it's a question like, uh, you, where you feel like your abilities are if you're the head coach in Gamba. And to be fair, if you look back, can't really deny the success he's had with uh, the Valiant specifically, right? Um, mm -hmm. sure. Which was like a split squad, to be fair. Yeah. But then again, there's probably also something that the organization has a say in and like, I'm not sure what their declared goal is. I think... Generally speaking, Albert is also someone that generally tends Winston in his selection um, in, in recent years, at least. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm not sure, um, but it's it's certainly yeah, it, it, an interesting. I mean, one. All I know is like you know, Valiant is one thing, and I don't know how many listeners are any sort of followers within. Valorant as well, but I mean, the, mm. so many good players have actually come through Immortals and used, mm. and for better or worse, used Immortals as a bit of a stepping stone to eventually get on other better rosters. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the biggest, the bigger names are like Asuna and Jonah P. Um, and even some other players like you, you'd say the Natures and Rossies and stuff like that. The point is, is that there is a Shut proven up. track record of him. Shot up is a great, a great one. It's a proven record for people that don't follow Valorant. These are just all random names. You don't even know who they are. <laughs> just trust that these are good players in Valorant that got that came through the Immortals system um, as predominantly probably a bit budget to start with. But I mean, they money balled the fuck out of Valorant and had good results doing that, or at least were competitive. They were competitive with teams that had like five times their budget. You know what I'm saying? So yep. that's from a value financial standpoint, that's crazy. Uh, so if they can, if Gamma can repeat that success on Florida, that that'd be that'd be wild. Let's talk about the supports. You already you already mentioned this about Anima, but you think uh, he's a bit of a weird pickup. I don't really know much about Majed. He played on Bobby Wasabi, Falcons, Raspberry yeah. Races. Um, another blind spot for me. I just haven't seen the teams that he's played on personally. Again, just haven't mm -hmm. you know not my particular regions and not great time zones, etc. All my regular oh, for excuses sure. for that. Uh, Animo, someone I'm probably one of the more familiar, you know, personalities that know Animo because I've actually seen him. I've actually pretty much seen his entire career from mm -hmm. front to back because I I casted him back when he was way pre Overwatch League, playing on Ardient with Aim God mm -hmm. and DM and Erster. Uh, interesting enough, against Gumba, so they were all in sure. the Pacific yeah. region in Taiwan together, all living in Taiwan, and Gumba's team got smacked the shit out of by Animo's team back then, and now he's his coach. Uh, oh, that, that team, by the way, that Animo was on in the Pacific region, that was Moon's team. Moon was coaching mm -hmm. that team. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of pedigree that goes back to that moment. Anyway, um, <laughs> so Animo is... I mean, I always regard him as a good player, but he, he gets such a really bad rap. And I think the whole soul falling apart last season was part of that. I mean, New York as well started falling apart. I don't know if he's just like a cursed player that always ends up on these type of teams. I never felt like he was personally holding the team back. I know he's not an exciting player to watch, and maybe people are, have been just too highly stimulated by the funny Astros and the FD gods and the moths of the world, and they're like, oh my god, Frogman, boop everybody, 5k. Yeah. Like, if you're not a Frogman getting 6k, 6K boops, then what are you really is, I think, a position some people hold. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas I think you're allowed to just be a maybe above league average player who does their job unceremoniously doesn't take a lot of credit and that's maybe an okay thing as a as a main support mm -hmm. and i think you do have to kind of look at the pov again because a player that i would describe as a very similar in terms of feeling where he's pretty invisible when you watch live but you kind of have to go back and really look at the povs oh. to get a feel for it but someone like Massa, where he's he's probably he's probably one of the more underrated areas of 2021 reign because mm -hmm. everything he did was pretty invisible. You never really got to see his impact that much, um, and that's what I'm saying. Like you don't need to be a super flashy main support, and I think Animo gets a lot of flack for not being a super flashy main support, but he's clearly someone valued by the mayhem because they wanted someone that was a veteran player with leadership qualities, and that could sort of bring the team together. Now I look across the board and I think, what else could they have done? Could they have gotten another main support player? Obviously, I think Florida would have wanted OG Ultraviolet first off. If they could get o sure. OG Ultraviolet, they probably right. don't have Animo Majed. So, we'll say that much. True. They can't get OG Ultraviolet? Okay, they have Animo Majed. 
I I actually thought it was going to be maybe Majed Luke Mino as a duo. I legitimately, when they teased their second yeah. support player, I was like, oh, it's got to be Luke Mino, right? Yes. But it wasn't. It was Animo, which was super surprising. But I'm only surprised. I'm not, I'm not surprised in the sense that of uh, play quality. I'm surprised in that I didn't think that he would be a priority pick for this type of team that mm-hmm. is was predominantly Western, but now is a mixed roster. Would agree. I think um, to Majed because um, I think he. I, I have less to say about him. Um, looking at the ultraviolet comparison, I think he is like comparable, but like maybe a, a not like a tier below, but like a step below. Like it's it's kind of close. They were competitive um, even in their region. Uh, I have also heard this, you know, a similar uh, kind of measuring from the you know, analysts and experts from that region. So would tend to agree. Um, good player probably is going to be another one of those like punch above your weights. So you're not expecting him to be good, but he's actually going to be pretty serviceable and probably above average. And then there's Animo. Um, I, I don't disagree with, with anything uh, with what you're saying. I think that's fine to be like a veteran vocal presence. Uh, but then we start to hear that supports are getting a little, uh, a little wonky um get a little a little ab- abused let's say um hopefully that changes uh, i'd like to see that changed but if it doesn't i'm a little concerned with animo um i'm a little i i i, I don't think i to talk on Masa, the Masa comparison i think Masa was flashy in subtle ways whereas animo has just always been like fine and I think that's fine just to be like the benchmark. Um, but it does, if I'm going to be completely honest, it does feel like a liability uh, yes. for this roster. Um, and it, I don't know why, but like, has Florida ever had a good main support? Can somebody please correct me? Because my brain is just Slime. like running blanks. Slime yeah, how, how, was no how high did you write? Like True. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but even then, I think most people would be like, oh, Slime was like kind of average, you know, wasn't. Yeah. It just feels like a role that like <laughs> in a weird way, there are certain teams that just have roles that they like always excel at. And then they just like, just don't have like, they, they just, there you go. That's the answer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's nuts and it's never been as bad as I think we tend to paint it. But with all the comments around support coming in overwatch two in the beta and it, again, it could change. Uh, I'm, I am concerned for Anma. I'll say that. I mean, Masa would just clearly be an upgrade, right? I'm not Agreed. alone in yes. this. I've, I've, I'm with Avril. I've been a big Masa Stan supporter since, you know, really fine tooth coming his play. Agreed. I'm really curious about what happened in the offseason there. Is it that they weren't targeting Masa or was Vancouver offering something better? Who knows? Good question. Yeah, that's I a great question. That's a really interesting dynamic of what happened behind the scenes because. If you're looking to build a, a good Western roster, mm. uh, I mean, fuck it. If you're if you're gonna be mini Atlanta Rain, you might as well start taking their players. <laughs> you know, start <laughs> with Master. Start there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, part of me does feel like Anima wasn't their priority, and the reason I say that is because I'm almost certain OG would have been their priority if they could have gone. Oh, first. Sure. That's yeah. why I. That's why I know Anima wasn't the first person. Like your Florida, your Gumba, or your Albany the offseason. You're like. Get get Animo now. Get he's on, on, number, he's on yeah. number one draft pick. No, he just he just simply wasn't. I just don't think he was. Yeah. No. I I think you'd be hard pressed to find a team not named the Los Angeles Valiant that would have been like get on him all on the horn. You know, like who is who is like who is like topping the I mean, the support like short lists. I I just don't see. I mean, I, was, I don't see that. I gamble on a rookie before I take Animo, and I and again. I think he's had a fine career. I think he's fine. I think he's like just the benchmark. I think he's okay. I think he can play. I just don't think he's very good. Let's let's call a spade a spade here. This is one of the worst uh, support lines in the league, right? I mean, well, I got well, a people, yeah. people are down because people are down on Anima, and Majed is probably a bit more unknown. And he's yeah. not, Majed is not the <sighs> right. he's not the standard for. A flex sport coming out of of the West because ultraviolet is the standard, and so yes. if you don't get ultraviolet, everybody else just is worse. Right. 
I mean, it, it is pretty hard to just look at any of the backlines and say they are clearly worse. Like, yeah, um, I, you're not wrong. Where do you put provide Emerald? I, I'm fine, like, even giving you that those could maybe be worse. I'm not sure. But that's pretty much it. I mean, how do you feel about... This is a reach, so you have to excuse me. <laughs> Irish Lastro. Yeah, I do. I was looking maybe, at the maybe. same thing. I'm like, maybe. 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 <sighs> I mean, it's the problem that... Flex, they, yeah. Yes, yeah. At the same time... And who plays main support. Bro, yeah, I mean, I even... Right, but you... <laughs> what happens if this, if this meta, once it's flex support, you're now, like, basically yeah, you're in playing... A position playing like battleships yeah, 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 with yeah. animo mm -hmm. where it's like there is b7 for come my in. aim like true come on. That, i'll take like, that i'll mirror's take a mirror gonna, mirror's gonna play your your anna don't you worry about that i'll take that I, i'll take your that. pretty little that. face mirror's gonna he's he's now like an omega sigma flex where a hyper flex would just would just play everything in their own role an omega sigma flex plays every role Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's what he's what hydra like he's what everybody thinks hydration is right like mirror genuinely can play everything at a pretty high level and like we've seen that in the past whereas hydration is like played winston in contenders and like was okay <laughs> yeah i i i like also, hydration also i've seen him for a long time he's not mirror. Yeah. yeah what you just said about the florida backline you could say about the entire roster though Mm. Hypothetically, May, ah, oh, yeah. Man. I mean, well, maybe, you're not wrong. in some ways. In some ways, yeah. So let's compare. Yeah. Let's, let's, put, let's put it to the test. But we got to wrap this up. So we're gonna do the rankings now. We're, well, we'll do mm, the yeah. rankings. We're gonna do the. Where would you put this team? Like, uh, where, where's the confidence level for this team in terms of a range in NA? B -b bottom four. Oh. So you think their range is 13 to 9? Or 9, 13? Mm, probably 8, oh, 13, if I'm being... That's, that's 6, then. Yeah. That's 6. That's, that's bottom 6. Yeah. Okay. 8 to 13, right? That's a wide range. I'm, I'm, I'm pussyfooting around this. It's like... Yeah, you are, you bitch. It's yes, they, I think I think for me there's somewhere <laughs> between one and thirteen. Somewhere <laughs> between one and thirteen. <laughs> okay, that let's, let's hear it then. Where are they? G uh, okay. Give me the exact map I... score, or I'm not satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, we we can do we save that for for you know power rankings. We will get there, I'm sure. Um, I like Florida, and some of it comes from like some bullshit like tea leaf reading that I think Gunba's gonna be a ruthless business manager and just like make <laughs> crazy signings. I like them around Boston. Wherever you put Boston, I like them either slightly below or slightly above them. I, I quite I don't like hate Florida. that. Sli I sorry, slightly below, slightly below. So, so if I think Boston is seventh, I think Florida could either be sixth or eighth. Bro, I, I think they're I would competitive need some, in the middle. I would need some flaming hot scrim bucks in order to believe this. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> flaming hot scrim. <laughs> I think Adam has a lot to prove. I like someone at main tank. I I agree. Animo is not who I want as main support. But I like Hydron quite a lot. I've heard a lot of good things. I've heard a lot of good things from Checkmate. I quite like Mirrors. Like just roll as a Sigma Flex fucking Alpha Chad Omega baller. Omega I Flex. like this fucking team. I like it a lot. I think it has a lot of potential to, like we've all been saying, like everybody's been saying, Plat Chat, God knows who. This team punches above their weight far past anybody else. I don't care if you're Paris. I don't care if you're London. As much as I think I like London, but a little concern there. Uh, I think Florida has a lot to prove, and I think they're going to be the upset team of the year for sure. Hmm. <sighs> So not convinced. Their roster quality is probably bottom five for me on paper. Yeah. So that is what 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Between 9 and 13 is, is, is roster quality. But I'm crazy enough to buy a ticket to this Gumba train. That's oh, what I'm shit, talking that's about. That's the Aussie talk. 
Here we go. And say that, and say that, I've just seen, I've seen the evidence, man. Like, it's, yeah. it's hard, it is hard to go up against the evidence. I'm not saying mm-hmm. it'll work every time. It's not infallible, but <sighs> fuck me. If he, if, it, if he didn't already have a track record, I'd be like, it's bullshit. But because mm. he's got a track record, I'm like, I think my man's onto something. So, uh, 913 conservatively, but they could maybe reach as high as. He's reaching deep into his bullshit pocket. You seen this, Joe? <laughs> Look at this man. This it's is not man. bullshit, though. I agree with this. This is a man that tries to come up with some bullshit. Uh, no, this isn't coming up. I think, Joe, I think Joe convinced me he's high as six. Yes, oh, I think I this team can be me. very good. Joe convinced me. Oh, Joe convinced I, me. Okay. Right. Oh, if you don't like me. their, their oh, roster on no. paper, I, I have got a train whistle and some fucking tickets to sell you to the Gunba fucking <laughs> emporium of I don't the Gunba players. I don't disagree, uh, but this man is also, like, not David Copperfield. Like, <laughs> he's, he's not going to sure. make this team levitate. But, but, <laughs> but you know who is. You look at you look at this this team's track record. You look at putting Albert in like the GM position. Like they're doing, they're willing to do what they need to explore all offers on the table to perform within their means. And I think that like showcases to the roster. Like hey, what? sometimes there's things out of your control that just I mean, happen, so and you have to put I'm a DPS on right day. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that has to happen. However. Am I wrong in remembering that last season they they started pretty all right last season? Yeah, yeah. yeah they, 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 made stage made made stage. Stage. they made the tournament. Yes, was, exactly. Yeah. So like that that go that argument goes out the window. I'm glad that you you at least wave the flag at you being. I actually unfair. think they start strong again. Early. I think I the agree. best yes. stage for Mayhem is literally the kickoff clash. They yep. start super strong. And then maybe they don't make playoffs is probably what's going to happen. But um, that's okay. I think they can can early. Because here's the other thing is I know that may have been scrimming longer than any team pretty much. Well, can't be any team because they have to play against somebody. Sure, yeah. (laughs) At minimum, there's another team that's been scrimming. We're playing against bots, baby. Let's go. Um, But they're one of the teams that have been scrimming the longest. I know they got a head start on their team because of that. I like that too. You're just adding fuel to the fire, Avril. Let's put them fifth. Are you crazy to put them fifth? No, because um, <laughs> no, I think six is crazy enough for me. I think that's the limit for craziness Having for me. I've out reached... of body experiences with you guys. Like, what is going on? Did I said nine to thirteen. I said yeah. nine to thirteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. conservatively. And then you said up to fifth. <laughs> no, that's not as crazy. Pills. That Joe said that. I said that. <laughs> hey, I didn't say that. I was just trying to get you to go there. Okay, so no one said fifth. Well, we're agreed on that, then. No one said fifth. No, no I'm saying six to eight. I'm saying anywhere from six to eight. Bro, right, you so one to Joe, to me, Joe has eight teams in six to eight. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've got a window, North baby. Team, the entire North American Pretty team much. is between six and eight. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, Florida, yes, so I think we end, we end and include that Florida mm-hmm. is a probably on paper not great team, but also a Keep your eye on this space. Yes. Because who knows what could happen? Who knows what kind of magic Gumba pulls out you, of his Houdini hat? You already know I'm like basically like caressing this man's achievements uh, mid-season point because I, I'm in love with people doing a lot with a, just very little resources. So don't fret if you're a Florida fan. This Jessica is going to come around eventually, but like right now you have to realistically look at this roster the limitations that it has mm. and just like we, I'm also setting the baseline low so they can then yeah. overperform and everyone right. still like it, it would be a ama- mm. it would just be like if they actually get top five and everyone's like well you guys all predicted top five for them how is that exciting like no 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 dude like they have bottom budget they they're like restricted in what they can do uh, in terms of, they probably couldn't have gone full Korean just based from, on their organization and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. They were beaten on a couple of trades, of course. Like, it's a very competitive ma- market in NA. Like, this, this is going to be like incredible if they make playoffs. Honestly. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, <sighs> final thing I'll say is, uh, hang in there, Florida fans. I know it's rough to be a Florida fan right now when even your own senator, Marco Rubio, is back in the Gladiators instead, but that's going to be... 
that's going to be a team preview for the Florida Mayhem. Now I'm going to move on to our next team. As I change my background. <laughs> 